A few months ago, I would have proudly called myself a software engineer, but now I think I prefer a different name, product engineer. And that's because there's a shift that all great engineers are currently experiencing. And that shift is from writing perfect code to good enough code to delivering meaningful value through real world products. And this is 100% not about abandoning your technical skills. It's about applying them differently with impact and outcomes in mind. And this transformation is happening rapidly. If you look at LinkedIn jobs, you'll see a bunch of product engineering roles available. So let's take a look into this transformation that's happening from software engineer to product engineer, starting with number one, which is what are you actually solving? As a software engineer, your first instinct might be to optimize or solve a technical challenge. I still take pride in writing clean abstractions and improving performance. But as a product engineer, that instinct I have may need to evolve a bit. Like for example, I might begin every task by zooming out and asking deeper questions like, who is this feature really for? And what pain point is this user experiencing? And maybe even ask like, is this the most valuable thing I can use my time to build right now? And suddenly when you think that way, it's not just about like clean code, it's about how I can move the needle of the product. I, as a product engineer, stop seeing requirements as check boxes and start seeing them as options. This mindset shift really changes everything, as I will still be writing lots of code, but I will care a lot more about what is being accomplished versus just completing tickets. Because at the end of the day, the best solution is the one that actually solves the problem for the user that the user is experiencing. Now, the second thing with this comparison is my path to finding the metric that matters the most. As a traditional software engineer, my success often looks like technical excellence. I took pride in clean code and clever abstractions kind of throughout my entire career. But once I shifted my mindset into product engineering, my definition of success like kind of changed. I start measuring the impact of my work in ways that matter to the business. In other words, it's no longer about whether my code is like technically perfect. It's about whether I deliver the right results to the user. This doesn't mean I've stopped caring about quality at all. It means I understand quality in context. A feature that nobody uses is just a wasted effort. A quick change that boosts signup rates, that's progress. Sometimes the most impactful thing I can do right now isn't a major rewrite. It's changing the color of a button that makes it more clickable or adding a subtle pop-up that reminds users on how to do an action. These can lead to massive improvements. Now, number three is the build trap I didn't even see coming. It's easy to fall in love with building. Like as an engineer, I thrive on curiosity. I'm drawn to new libraries and architecture patterns. I freaking love it. <laughs> Prototyping feels exciting, refactoring something old, feels really productive. I love all aspects of it. But the trap that I fall into is not all of those are pr actually productive. As a product engineer, my job isn't to build for the sake of building. It's to build with a purpose. And that often starts by slowing down and asking a simple question. Does this solve a real problem for a real user? That changes everything. It means I don't blindly chase trends or over-engineer solutions just for the heck of it. I don't create unnecessary features just because I can. Instead, I have become laser focused on outcomes. Every line of code I type is a trade-off in some way. The mindset shift here is simple but powerful. It changes from can we build it to should we build it. Now, number four is that the launch or the release is just the beginning. In traditional software engineering, success is often defined by the delivery or the deployment of the application. I close tickets, I merge my PRs, and watch my features hit production and once it's finished, on to the next sprint. But releasing a feature is just step one. What comes next is where the real work begins for product engineers. Did the users actually use it? Were there unexpected bugs or friction points? Instead of writing for perfect specs, I try and build a minimal viable version. I try and monitor the rollout and talk to real users. Then I tweak, improve, pivot, whatever I have to do to really find improvements. In this world, iteration beats perfection because perfection is a moving target. And the only way to hit it is by staying close to your users and refining often. Now, number five is when code isn't enough. In my world, code was everything. It's technical, it's focused, and most importantly, it's safe. But when I stepped into a product in 
engineering role, the boundaries of my work completely expanded. Pretty much overnight, my job isn't just writing code, it's understanding context to build the right stuff. I no longer solve isolated technical problems. I solve product problems, and that requires collaboration far beyond just my little dev team. I work hand in hand with product managers, designers, marketing teams, testers, and I begin to realize that my pull requests are just one layer of everything in a much larger system. The way I name an endpoint might affect the API documentation. The uh, performance of my feature might impact user retention. Even a minor UI bug could frustrate, you know, like hundreds of users a day. I don't just ask, is the code correct? And does it scale? And does it look nice? I also ask, will this feature create the experience we intended for that user? And then I also might ask the question of like, how does this fit into the larger picture of the product? Because product engineers zoom out before zooming into the code. I like to think in terms of outcomes, not just implementations. I realize the real value isn't just the code, it's the impact that the code creates, right? And once I start thinking that way, I build much better products. Now, number six, and it's the last thing, and that's that the real product is not about code. It's easy to mistake the code base for the product. After all, it's where I spend most of my time. I'm debating architectures, I'm coding, I'm picking the best libraries, and yes, those things still matter. But the user user never sees the code. They don't care if you use the service layer, followed solid principles, or shaved 10 milliseconds off a database query. They care whether the thing you build actually works and actually makes sense and actually solves their problem. Now, all that technical stuff still really matters. I don't want to downplay it, but I don't want to overhype it either. That's the product engineer mindset shift. The real product is the experience, not the code that powers it. Product engineers internalize this deeply. Instead of asking what's the most elegant implementation, maybe they ask what's the simplest way to deliver this right now to fix the user frustration. Doesn't mean writing sloppy code. I want to make that very clear. It's not about writing sloppy code. It's about writing purposeful code. Sometimes the leanest solution is the best one, even if it's not technically perfect. Sometimes skipping a layer of, of abstraction means shipping two weeks earlier. Sometimes refactoring can wait until there's a real pain point. So overall, this shift doesn't mean we're leaving software engineers behind in the dust. It just means that we're kind of evolving the term of software engineering. When you adapt the mindset of a product engineer, your code becomes more than just syntax. It becomes strategy. It becomes leverage. It becomes part of something bigger. You're not just shipping software, you're shipping impact. Until next time.